Last summer, I uh, flew my auto gyro down to New Smyrna Beach in Volusia County, Florida, because I'd heard some sharks had bitten a few people down there, and yeah, I was going to do something about it. I uh, I went down there with the intention of bullying the offending sharks into deeper waters so that the uh, the beaches would be safe again for intelligent, law-abiding, sober abstinent American tourists and for people in real life too. So after I'd landed on the beach um, I knew I had to take uh, the appropriate steps you know to induce a shark attack. I had to get them to come to me. Um, I dressed in chain mail uh, because sharks can't bite through chain mail and my outfit it was painted in three sections. It was painted yellow, silver, and white because bright colors attract sharks. And the other thing that attracts sharks are um, loud, unusual, awful noises, the kinds of um, the kinds of sounds that maybe a wounded fish might make or or the sound uh, that um, a distressed swimmer might make. So after I suited up I I grabbed my portable waterproof stereo and um, I put on a Macy Gray album and I started treading water. The water that I was in was probably about six feet deep. Most shark attacks occur in depths of uh, six feet of water or less because too much water actually scares them. You see, sharks, they're not, they're not really as tough as a lot of people give them credit for. They just they don't have any regrets, you know? Well, after about an hour of floating there, I, uh, I still hadn't gotten any takers, so... I turned up the Macy Gray and I started flailing my arms around and splashing the water because um, I knew sharks were also attracted um, by rapid movements. I didn't do that in the beginning because I didn't want to exhaust myself. I planned on, you know, beating up and killing lots of sharks that day. Well, about five minutes into this routine, I, uh, I had my first customer. It was a great white, a female. The females are bigger than males. Uh, this one was probably about... 21 feet in length, lots of bite marks and scars all over. You see male sharks, they bite the female sharks while they're copulating, so I knew that this one that was after me was a real slut. And that, that made me even angrier because for reasons unknown to me, I can never have sex with human beings. And, uh, you know, I realized at that moment that there are tons of slimy, soulless sharks swimming around, eating things like toilet seats and empty soup cans, and they're getting laid more often than me. So I decided this this hussy was going to get it big time. You know, she she bit down on my left leg, which was it was actually an exposed part of my body, but it didn't hurt. It didn't hurt for two reasons didn't hurt because sharks actually don't bite any harder than human beings. That's true. What really gets you is the fact that their teeth are serrated and they wiggle around. That's what dices you up. Uh, the other reason it didn't hurt is because my left leg is prosthetic. It was this expensive advanced prototype of the squishy rubber feet that anybody can buy now in a Halloween costume shop. At this point it wasn't worth much but it was uh, you know, it was it was loaded with this nostalgic value, so I had to save it um, before this great white whore made off with it. So I had to had to you know go into attack mode, and, and I, I guess what I'm about to tell you all is a useful guide for dealing with shark bites as they occur. So listen carefully and uh, take notes if you're really stupid. I first thing I did was I removed a rocket pop from the cooler that I had attached to my hip. Yes, a rocket pop. Like the kind you eat in the summer. You know, they're cold and they're on a stick. Um, they're your first line of defense. That's how you get the attack rolling here. Um, you have to work quickly though because rocket pops dissolve very quickly in water. Now the thing is sharks have extremely sensitive eyes. You could gouge them but you know, the preferred method is to use a rocket pop. You see, there's something about the outer membrane of a shark's eye. It dissolves instantly when it comes into contact with the blue section of rocket pops. I don't know what's in them that does that, but, you know, 
why argue with or uh, even try to understand success. I, I jammed um, my rocket pop into both of her eyes. They popped and their contents were released in the water and, and floating around. Um, of course, because she was in so much pain, she released my um, high-tech rubber leg and that's when I went in for the kill. Now, th this is how you make the whole shark explode. And this works on all kinds of sharks, not just female great whites. There's a paint, a red paint, and it was, it was only manufactured in 1991 to coat the little sound-activated dancing Kool-Aid Man toy that you could send away for once you'd collected something like 800,000 Kool-Aid points. Um, they're, these guys, they're really hard to find these days because 73 million sharks are killed each year and most of them are taken out by these little dancing Kool-Aid Man toys. This is what the fishermen are using to get you know these sharks. You see, if you're able to insert one of these Kool-Aid Man into a shark's rectum or the butthole, um, this red paint causes them to explode. But only partially. There's, there's enough left of them to make soup and expensive men's suits out of. Uh, luckily, I still had my dancing Kool-Aid man toy that I'd sent away for when I was a little kid. Um, his little purple guitar no longer stuck to the insides of his uh, white gloves because the Velcro strips had fallen off a long time ago, but his cute little purple guitar wasn't essential, you know, to, uh, to blowing up these sharks anyway. So, Hussy Shark, once I got Kool-Aid Man into her butthole, she went kablooey, and then when two other great white sharks came into our area to, to eat what was left of her, I, uh, I pulled the same crap on them, and uh, it, it worked beautifully. You see, I purchased a couple of extra Kool-Aid men on eBay, which really, you know, hiked up the price of this expedition, but it was worth it. You know, I'm a humanitarian, and you got to do what you got to do. Um, and after that, I think word got around the shark community, you know, what was up, because no more of them got near the shore, and I don't believe Florida has had any shark attack problems uh, since I made it back to shore that day. At which point I, uh, I returned the Macy Gray CD to the record store I'd stolen it from because no, no garbage can deserve that fate. Then I stopped off at Pantheon Pizza and had a whole pizza to myself, and... Then I flew back up here to the North Pole to just, you know, meditate on what I'd done for humanity. And You know, in hindsight, I think I, I, think I did it for all of you um, who watch my YouTube videos on here. I love you. I sincerely love you all. I mean, even those of you who leave nasty comments and demand that I kill myself, go for a swim. It's, it's on me. And suck on a rocket pop or something else.